On this week's episode of What's Up Weekly, some people around Bloomington are bringing back live entertainment in the middle of a pandemic. We will have organizers from Front Porch Concerts here in studio. And wildfires are ravaging the West Coast. We spoke to one IU student whose family is being affected by the crisis. What's Up Weekly starts now. Welcome to the 20th season premiere of What's Up Weekly. I'm Noelle Friel. And I'm Anna Black. We start off with some heavier news today, the wildfires that span all along the West Coast. Active fires currently stretch from Oregon to San Diego, the death toll up to 33. Over 1 million acres of land have burned in Oregon alone. We spoke with one IU student from California who says his family is dealing with the impacts of the wildfire, even though they aren't in active danger. It's been crazy. I, I don't remember hearing, you know, the last time it was this hot, not only in Encinitas where I live, but really all over, all over the state. If you're looking for ways to help wildfire victims, you can donate to the American Red Cross or the Wildfire Relief Fund at GoFundMe.org. On a lighter side of things, you may have noticed some new stages set up all across campus. Those are part of IU Auditorium's Open Air Venue Program which gives organizations the chance to host socially distanced events. There are 13 spaces available around campus, and they can be used for things like performing arts, film screenings, and religious services. IU-related organizations can book the outdoor venues at iuauditorium.com. A local group of musicians has found a way to bring live music to their neighborhood, even in the middle of a pandemic. Front Porch Concerts is a group who provides free live outdoor concerts in Hyde Park right from, you guessed it, a front porch. The group was organized by Lauren Bernofsky, a composer with a doctorate in music, and Kara Cologne, a cellist and vice president of the American Cello Institute, which works to research and preserve string music. Their neighbors come to watch their weekly concerts, masked and socially distanced, some even from their cars, just to enjoy some free music and get out of the house. So Lauren and Kara are here with us in studio. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Oh, thanks for Our having pleasure. us. So how did Front Porch Concerts get started? Okay, I'll <laughs> take this one. Um, we're friends, we live just right around the corner from each other and I play the violin, Kara plays the cello. And I don't know which one of us had the idea to get together and play some duets, but we were just playing for fun on the front porch and lo and behold, some of the neighbors would be walking by with their dogs or just strolling out there and they started applauding and you know thanking us for playing We're like oh that's kind of it's, it was a really good feeling because as musicians one of the joys that we get is from playing not just our instrument by ourselves but playing with each other that's that sense of community as musicians is just something that at least I can say I really thrive on so this was great for us to do it for that reason and then when we saw that we were really making a difference for just people out in the neighborhood like we thought well maybe we should make this official and actually call a concert together. So I advertised it by putting a little sign on the tree outside my house. And we were off to a pretty good start. Even the first concert, we had a pretty reasonable attendance there, I'd say. Yeah, down the street and across the street. And it, you know, just to see the, the joy in people's face, just you know, coming together safely and uh, experiencing something that's beautiful and you know, emotional rather than <laughs> all the the horrible things you hear in the news every day. So it was a wonderful community centric event. Absolutely. So. Some good news in the middle of a pandemic, Exa right? Exactly. Yeah. So I played violin in high school and I can tell you it is hard <laughs> work. <laughs> so how often do you guys rehearse? Um, you know, maybe three or four or five times before a uh, concert. And what has been really great is, you know, it started just the two of us and also with Lauren's daughter. And by, you know, the time the end of the season uh, arrived, we had seven people socially distanced on her beautiful front porch. Some of my students, a colleague from the School of Music, um, you know, from all different parts of, of Bloomington and ages, all different ages, and mm -hmm. it, it was wonderful. 
Yeah. So what did it feel like when you started gradually growing an audience and feeling so much support from the community? I felt a bit of a sense of responsibility. Like, you know, when I'm not just here to do a good job, which I am, but I'm, I realize that other people's, maybe this is a bit lofty, but other people's emotional well-being is sort of tied in with this too. And I just want to make sure, because I know how it's so therapeutic for me, and maybe we can really make a difference for other people. Um, there was one person in the audience once we played a Beatles tune, and she came up to me after and said, you know, you started playing Hey Jude, and the tears were just streaming down. And she said, I was just connecting with my high school days, and, and it just, all these memories were coming back. And I realized, wow, you know, I'm, what we do is really important, and I just want to make sure that I'm doing a good job of it. It's almost like a sort of, sacred sort of thing to be doing so um yeah so we felt the responsibility but and that's why we rehearsed a lot i mean three or four times may not sound like a lot that's the times we're getting together but every night i was practicing an hour or two on this music because i just wanted to be able to play my individual part really well and um yeah i i, I guess i figure you know, in music if it's worth doing it's worth doing well yeah, definitely. I know you mentioned to me that a lot of the people in your audience are maybe a little bit like more elderly and so they don't get out much because of the pandemic right now. It's so dangerous. So it's such a great thing to give them just something to look forward to in the day. Exactly. And, you know, there were families there, too. We had a lot of uh, families with younger children and to have something like that for them as well. Uh, you're right. Just being able to, to get out and to do something that's safe and and wonderful <laughs> to come together. You know, just the social aspect was fantastic. Yeah, definitely. So I know this past weekend was the last concert of mm -hmm. the season. I am so sad. <laughs> but would you guys ever think about doing this again in the future, maybe next summer? Absolutely. You know, I think it, it will be needed regardless if the, the pandemic is over by that point or not. I think coming together as a community through music is always a, an important thing. I also love being able to share classical music because a lot of people have the idea that, oh, that's something you have, something you have to put your tuxedo on and, and be you know, rigidly sitting in the concert hall and <laughs> right. you're supposed to know the history of the symphony to understand it. And it's really it doesn't have to be that way at all. And you know, we try to make an interesting mix of pieces and make it relaxing and fun and, and just, just enjoyable. And people are there, unlike in a concert hall where you're sort of captive audience in your seat, you know, people can, they can walk off if they don't want to, or they can be there, but it's completely, it's just a very different dynamic from being in a concert hall. And I love that about it. And hopefully we'll get some converts to classical music this way. <laughs> Never know. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much again for joining us in studio. I really appreciate it, and we loved hearing from you. Absolutely. Thanks Our so pleasure. <laughs> thank you. All right. Now, Anna, over to you. Thanks, Noelle. New York Fashion Week is happening this week. We'll tell you how it's going to look different in the middle of a pandemic. That and more on Trending Topics after the break. Welcome back. This week is New York Fashion Week, and it's going to be looking a lot different this year due to the pandemic. New York Fashion Week started on September 13th and will run until September 17th ahead of London, Milan, and Paris. Instead of the traditional runway format, there will be a mix of virtual and socially distant shows with limited audiences. To broadcast the virtual events, the Council of Fashion Designers of America has created the platform Runway 360 to digitally showcase new collections. And TikTok is even getting in on the action. TikTok will be having its own online fashion week, partnering with popular labels such as Louis Vuitton to live stream runway shows and present capsule collections. Also streaming this week is yet another Parks and Recreation reunion. The Parks and Rec cast will be reuniting for the second time this year, this time for a political cause. That's right, this time they'll be reuniting for a virtual town hall as part of a fundraiser for the Wisconsin Democratic Party. The event will feature a Q&A session with some of the show stars, such as Amy Poehler, Aubrey Plaza, and Nick Offerman, better known by their character names, Leslie, April, and Ron. Fans must make a donation of at least $1 to attend this one-time virtual event. 
which will be live streamed on September 17th. And there's someone else who's making a comeback. Make sure to tune in to the American Country Music Awards tomorrow night because it will be the first time Taylor Swift has performed in it in seven years. She'll be taking the stage at the Grand Ole Opry House once again to perform her song Betty from her latest album, Folklore. This is actually one of my favorite songs from her album, so I will definitely be watching. And that's it, what's up this week. Tune in next week for more local and entertainment news. And be sure to follow us on social media. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at IUS TV News. For What's Up Weekly, I'm Noelle Friel. And I'm Anna Black. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.